When I formatted my hard drive the other day, I was wondering, is it even worth reinstalling Overwatch? I've already seen everything the game has to offer and it's not like Blizzard is planning to give us any new content until Overwatch 2 comes out. Shouldn't I just go play something else instead? But then it happened. The messiah of dead games, the Overwatch content creator experimental balance patch. Now if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to my initial video in which I decided to give a rating to every single one of these new changes, but among all these balance updates was one that stuck out a lot. Lucio can now Goomba stomp his enemies by using B-Drop. At this point, I knew that I had a mission to fulfill. It was my destiny as bestowed upon me by the hand of fate to get good at Lucio so that I can spawn camp some fools by using his ultimates. But before I can do any of that, I need to pay my bills and who better to help me do that than our sponsor for today, Surfshark VPN. Now I know what some of you are thinking. I don't really need a virtual private network, to which I would respond, are you sure about that? While you might not necessarily need one, there are many reasons for why it is definitely nice to have. Security, convenience, or entertainment, Surfshark comes a lot of benefits that make it worth your while. My favorite talking point all year round has been the fact that living in Germany, I simply do not get to watch a lot of the shows you guys get in places like the US. And likewise, the US doesn't get the same shows as the UK or Japan or many other different countries. Without a VPN, I could not watch half the animes I take inspiration from for my videos. But entertainment aside, Surfshark Alert can also come in really handy because it immediately notifies you when it detects a security breach in any of your emails or credit card information. And not only is the app incredibly simple to use, you can also installed on an unlimited amount of devices with a single subscription. And the best part, from now until the end of the year, you can save 83% on your Surfshark subscription and get four extra months for free, simply by using my link in the description below and using my promo code CLIFTERIOS. It also helps to support my channel, so that's a pretty neat benefit too. Thanks a bunch to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video, and now, onto our standard programming. Welcome to patch 1.66, the Harbinger of Highlight Reels. An update that has a single goal, to make the game more fun? You can have fun in Overwatch? I had to see it for myself. And there it was, on my very first game, Mr. Spyro the Lucio player scored a POTG by turning two unsuspecting attackers into pancakes. I could not resist the temptation, and I didn't have to wait long because this update is so based that all my cues took no more than like 50 seconds. But I would soon learn that achieving mastery in the BM department would be no simple task for a Lucio novice like myself. On my first attempt at spawn camp, I got slapped out of my ultimate in very unceremonious fashion. I wish I could tell you that was the worst failure of the night, but it got so, so much worse than that. Misjudging an enemy trying to get away, immortality field ultimately having the last say, Doomfist not letting me finish my cast, getting hacked by a summer that refuses to touch grass, flashbang stopping me before I could attack or sliding straight off of Bastion's back, and the list goes on and on. Try after try, I failed to let my beat drop even on the biggest of targets, and even though I finally succeeded by the end of this game, the fact that I took a Graviton to make that happen, and the fact that we stomped this round anyway made that feel very unsatisfying. Another hour into my session, I started to get the hang of it, but still couldn't land a clean Goomba stomp beat drop that actually mattered. Most of the time when I got a kill, we lost the fight anyway, and with every passing hour my tendonitis got worse, my arms were hurting, but I didn't want to stop until I could finally pull off a clean spawn camp beat drop. And that leads us to a fateful match. Ladies and gentlemen, our story today takes place on Junkertown. Now, Junkertown isn't what most people would describe as a good Lucio map, but to be fair, it's not like I had any success on maps that were good for him, so why not go for a bit of a challenge? And a challenge is exactly what the enemy team was ready to provide as the gates opened to start off this match. A strong opening is exactly what we needed to begin establishing our dominance over the blue team, and my Winston was more than ready to make for our vanguard. While the defenders were busy blowing our monkey up, I made my way over the flank into their back line to start getting really annoying. The Zenyatta immediately turned around for me and I began to engage in evasive maneuvers. My goal was to make the opposition uncomfortable, though I figured that going for an elimination could only be a good thing. But as I went to juggle the Zen, a sharp pain stung through my arms. I was pushing the limits of my ability to gain before my tendonitis became unbearable. As the Zen came down, I missed all of my shots in response to the pain and ate dirt shortly after. Am I overdramatizing one of my many medical conditions to excuse my bad aim? Maybe, but there's no way for you to prove it. Needless to say that without my shining presence leading our team to victory, the opposition had a very easy time rolling as well as smoking us back into our spawn. They unapologetically stomped on our turn and refused to leave until absolutely necessary. But it was that overconfidence that we could exploit. Using one of our two collective brain cells to take the second exit, we flanked their overzealous Reinhardt and created a footing for us to leap into a counterplay. Once we had taken care of the enemy Reinhardt, my Winston immediately, uh, imme immediately jumped on ahead to secure space for the rest of our team. And it was only then that we actually started to play like one as well, seamlessly following up on one another's plays to build momentum, eventually culminating in an aggressive attempt to stagger the last remaining defenders. But let's 
not forget that Lucio isn't the only character that has been changed in this patch. Anna's failed attempt at boosting their Zarya led to them nanoing themselves, and I started to doubt my decision of diving them being the right one. Indecisiveness marked my actions, and I made my choice too late to evade what was now a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's annoying to admit, but my misplay in conjunction with the blue team's respawn had ultimately lost us that fight. Without a speed boost to get across this wide open field, the defenders could pick us apart one by one, which meant that we had to go back to the drawing board. I definitely felt responsible not only for my bad aim, but also for my bad decisions making this game harder on my teammates, but we were so disjointed at that point that I had a hard time coming up with a new plan. While I was agonizing over how to play the game, my teammates just went and played the game, securing an early elimination and as such spearheading our next offense. My Baptiste making that choice for me was exactly what I needed. I had an ultimate and I was determined to drop it on somebody's head. Except when the enemy Zarya caught me in a graviton search, I had to make a choice. Do I use my ultimate now to secure this fight and have more chances to BM further down the line? Or do I risk us wiping here so that I can go in and use it offensively? Unfortunately, it was a bit of a non-choice after all. I had been enough of a detriment to my team so far already, so I was not gonna let us lose just because I wanted to BM. Speaking of which, my soldier was taking a 1v1 in our backline, and let's just say that some of us were a bit more concerned about contributing to the win than others. Hey, at least I can get my ultimate 30% faster on this patch, so I had a very real chance of still achieving my goal, and with all of my teammates at low HP, I could just waste my amp it up because we got anti -ge. Whatever the case may be, the first point was ours, and I had reason to start to accelerate. The matchmaker had gifted us with a well-balanced match, and I was determined to make use of that. So far, this game was not going according to plan, if that plan is me spawn camping somebody with a beat drop. The defenders were the kind of team that, should you give them an inch, they're gonna turn it into a mile, and as such, Winston and I decided to go on the offensive and use the moment of surprise to our benefit. But what surprised even me is that another one of our teammates was apparently right behind us, seizing the moment of chaos. Wolf Hunter succeeded in connecting their data with the face of three unlucky defenders. I mean, I'm not one to complain, as a support, it is my job to make my team shine, even if that ends up happening completely by accident. The bob on the cart was dealt with much like its owner, and our team had made sure that there was no quarter given to the opposition. Using our mobility, we immediately made way for the enemy spawn, leaving our Baptiste as the only player on the card. It was obvious at this point that some players on our team definitely had more fun than the others, because while the majority of us decided to stuff the defenders into a choke point, our Baptiste continued to keep the card on the road so that our plays actually made sense. But our offense team had tasted blood, and they would not be satisfied until we get the satisfaction of a team kill announcement above our heads. I mean what I said about trying to allow my teammates to shine, but in situations where we have different ideas about when to disengage, engage, I had no choice but to put myself in danger to save my comrades. All this effort we put into keeping the defenders in their spawn resulted in an uncontested payload that could make its way to the second point without a hitch. Big shout out to my Baptiste for being a good sport about it, because without them sacrificing their personal enjoyment of this match, I would have never gotten the following opportunity. I knew that now was the only chance for me to achieve my goal. Once the second point is captured, trapping the defenders in their spawn will be impossible. So I looked in the shadows on the high ground until I finally spotted a victim. This Zenyatta, I had failed to eliminate them at the start of the game already. The wound of embarrassment this cause went deep, and I knew that failing to get them again would be a one-hit KO to my morale. But there was no pulling back now. I leapt faithfully, hoping that my beat would drop true as I descended upon my oblivious prey. My heart raced as I fought the urge of flinching in response to the sharp pain in my arms, but my conviction would. No, it had to prevail. I grit my teeth and finally connected my sound blaster with the enemy's head. At long last, I had done it! A clean spawn cap without my team having to set me up. The Zenyatta would get to enjoy their long spawn while the rest of my team confirmed the capture of the second point. All we had to do now was take this payload home and wrap up the game, which wasn't as easy as I hoped it would be. The blue team was sick and tired of getting bullied, and one side effect of getting spawn camp is that you start to stack up a lot of ultimates since you never have a chance to use them. In Russia, the graviton surges you, and when you add a nano boost to the mix as well, the result you get is usually a clean team wipe that we didn't have an answer for. You could make the argument that I should have kept my beach up to counter the grav, but in my defense, I wasn't expecting my immortality toss Baptiste to make a swap to Zenyatta. Well, throwing blame around is not gonna fix this problem because we were the ones getting countered on our spawn now. Every step we took and every cooldown we used was done so in self-defense as the blue team continued to control the game. It didn't matter how we attacked or where we decided to attack from, the blue team was always one step ahead of us and had no issue responding to an ultimate of us by using two of theirs. Fight over fight, desperation started to kick in within the ranks of my comrades as everyone blindly attempted to break the stalemate through sheer tenacity but was just never enough. And I 
I knew that I had to do something about this. The defenders were getting complacent, they felt too sure of their victory, when they thought just spamming damage into the choke point would be enough, we decided to go on the offensive HP be damned. Genji and I made sure that their team knew we were coming for them, this strategy did not come without sacrifice, but our unwillingness to give in made them question their positioning, and by the time they decided to try and group up, it was already too late. Our secret weapon was already unleashed. While the front line was busy trying to get us off the objective, our Rotox slithered his way into the backline to start wreaking havoc. The blue team's supports created both the immovable shield as well as the unbreakable spear, but without their frontline investing resources into protecting them, they couldn't make use of those weapons in the first place. We finally succeeded in breaking their kill streak, and it was clear that the defenders were flustered. With every inch we moved forward, the defender bias would only get stronger, but it didn't seem like the blue team wanted to rely on that in the first place, instead stalling us out one by one in hopes of cancelling out our momentum. Alas, their plan was successful, and the payload found itself in no man's land once again, but we had no intention of giving them any space to breathe. When they failed to stagger us, we immediately came in with a counterplay and eliminated their support line once again. Time was running out, but we were stronger than ever, and with that, we approached the final fights. But unfortunately, I will be denied the happy end that I so desperately desired after a long evening of playing Overwatch. An overtime fight that lasted a minute and a half with me charging up beat drop twice would still see us facing the defeat screen. A lot of mistakes were made on sides of the defense as well as the offense, but at the end of the day, I can confidently say that the better team took home the W. It's hard to be mad about the outcome of this game after how much fun this round was, even if it frustrates me that I can't get you guys a win for this week's episode. Well, whatever the case may be, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out, consider subscribing if you want to see more, and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and until next time, peace.